Hello, I'm ABX Toycat and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on what is perhaps the biggest feature in Title Update 25, and that is customized super flats. So basically a lot of people have dismissed this as, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh, you can have lapis lazuli instead of a dirt now. Okay, that's kind of cool, then they kind of ignore it. But in fact, this is actually one of the biggest features that came because there's so much customization. Like, there's literally almost infinite number of different worlds you can make with this, and lots of those aren't just useful for creative, but can be used in survival too. I think it'd be really cool to, you know, go through a lot of those possibilities and talk about why they're so cool uh, for both creative and for survival. Either way, I very much appreciate a like on the video. It helps out the channel a lot and lets me know you like it. Also, lets me know you want to see more Tile Update 25 stuff. Anyway, let's go into talking about exactly what's coming in this. So, let's start by saying, although you can customize this, all of this if you want, if you just want to go through this simply, you don't want to learn all of this stuff, you just want to be like, I want this, that, and that, then there's actually, if you press Y or Triangle on PlayStation, you can actually see a bunch of presets. You can see here there are seven separate presets, and these presets sets cover most of the easy things you'd want. So if you just want to have uh, a classic, uh, you know, like a super flat world, but you want it to instead be, you know, kind of higher up, you want to have trees there too, Overworld will actually give you much more, you know, like stone in between you and the bedrock. It'll also give you uh, some cool stuff like trees will spawn naturally, and it just, you know, it's a, it's a nicer way to look at the world if you want to have a flat, you know, regular world. That's something you can do. So this is a totally viable, you know, kind of survival world if you want. You can do the same with a desert, with a snow biome, water. You, you've got all these options. Tunnelers Dream's another favorite because it spawns all those natural things like abandoned mine shafts and strongholds and you can go explore them if you want to i think it's cool personally and yeah that's what's going on here so uh let's uh let's leave these alone for now let's go back to classic flat and let's talk about how you can make your own uh you know super flat worlds and the number of cool things you can do of them so we'll start by covering uh the simplest part of this and this is biome so before you could only have a plains biome which meant that you know mobs would spawn all that sort of stuff uh you can see there's a description on the right there which explains all these basically but now you can pick pretty much any biome you want you can pick a desert you can pick a forest you can pick a jungle, you can pick any biome from the game that's a major biome, and even cooler than that, it's not just all the major biomes, there's actually the never and the end too down here, so you can make your whole world a super flat never, you can make your whole world a super flat end, and even cooler than that, if you pick the end, you'll actually have an ender dragon in your center, and if you pick the never, then you'll actually see ghasts and stuff spawning, so you can make some super crazy challenging survival challenges with this, uh, I will recommend one somewhere in the video, uh, but yeah, that's something you can do, so we'll pick that for now, I, I think the two most recommendable, uh, personally, would be deserts or plains, because they get villages and I like that sort of stuff. But if you want to have jungle, it has much greener grass. I'll actually show you that first. And that's something you can do. Also, um, what you can do very easily is if you want to just have a very close to custom experience, uh, you can just take what you already have from one of the presets and then play around the numbers. So as well as being able to edit the block that you have at each layer, so I can decide I want silverfish be the entire map, which would just be awful, uh, you can also decide to play around the quantity. So I can just have more dirt if I want to. And then you can also just add in layers if you want to. So I want to have those seven dirt layers there. And then I'll just have a layer of bricks just to be confusing before bedrock and to have uh, something there. So yeah, and then I'll have, uh, let's say, two layers of bricks uh, down just below bedrock. And then you move it by doing... Uh I believe you have to move it by pressing X and then like that. There we go. So now you can see we've got grass, dirt, bricks, and then bedrock in a jungle biome. So we'll get that nice green tint to the grass, and then we'll get all of that going on. So this is level levels, pretty simple to understand. You just pick what you want. There is 128 layers max. One of these is taken by bed, bed, uh, taken up by bedrock. You cannot delete bedrock no matter how much you want to. Uh, it, it tries If you try to replace it with air, for instance, it will just place that level in between uh, the stuff. You just can't replace bedrock, which is kind of sad if you ask me, but you know, it's, it's just a thing you can't do. So... Yeah, this cannot be broken. As you can see, it's deliberate. They don't want you having access to the void for some reason, and that's something you can do. So you can play around with all of this. You can make the layers you want up to 128 layers. So uh, yeah, that is pretty cool if you ask me. Just to show you that. Uh, oh, it's 128 layers total, by the way. So uh, yeah, 127 after the bedrock layer. Anyway, let's talk about properties, because this is the really cool thing. This is the thing you can't properly do on PC. You have to use an external program to get the code for you. So uh, basically, you can have a bunch of options as to what you do with your custom super flat. So if you look Looking through here, you can see there's just so many things, and it's hard to kind of understand all of this, so I figured I'd explain. So first of all, size. This is the size of your NPC villages. If you set this to small, your villages will kind of limit themselves. If you set it to large, they won't be limited at all. And then you can pick spacing. If you want to make a larger gap between the villages, you can. I don't know why the minimum setting is so small. If you're wondering, 512 meters is 512 blocks. So that means half the map across from each other. I really don't know why this is set so low. I'm not too happy with that, but it's still a thing you can do. And then it goes on chunk sizes. That's a thing. So yeah, you can pick villages, you can see how far apart they are, you can make them super super rare, make them a whole like, you know, 360 size world across from each other, or you can make them as common as humanly possible, whichever one you like, you can do that. Abandoned mineshafts, again, toggle them on and off, once you've toggled them, you pick their chance. 
the chance only goes from 0.1 to 1%. This is per chunk, by the way. So if you have a 10 by 10 area with this, one of those will have an abandoned mineshaft. If you turn this up to max, there is just abandoned mineshafts everywhere. It's very, very fun to see. And if you like exploring that sort of stuff, this is great. If you don't, you can turn it down to 0.1 or you can just turn it off altogether. So uh, yeah, you've also got strongholds. This is a really cool feature because if you do want to play a survival world, you can actually play like the PC and have free strongholds. If you're wondering, on console, we have one, but on PC, they have three. There's a discrepancy because our worlds are quite limited. But yeah, you can also go with two if you want, and you can go with one. It's all the same thing. And then the spacing is exactly the same. 512 blocks to 864 blocks are your options. I don't know why that is. So biome specifics are things that are specific to that biome. Obviously, that comes from the name. Uh, but basically, this means in a you know a desert, you've got to think like a desert temple. In a jungle, a jungle temple. In a, uh, a swamp, you've got a witch hut. Uh, you, all that sort of stuff. These are the biome specific structures. Villages in uh, both deserts and uh, uh, stuff. You've got all that sort of stuff to consider. And uh, that's the spacing is the exact same thing one more time. Then these last four options almost speak for themselves, but just if you are curious, dungeons means you can have mob, mob spawners. Uh, you know, these are kind of questionable. Playing in survival, you need them. Not playing in survival, probably not going to come up. Uh, decorations, uh, same sort of thing. This just makes the world look more real. So if you want to have long grass, if you're playing in an overworld type thing and trees and stuff, you can do that. If you don't, you can. Uh, it also makes ore spawn below the ground, which is very useful. This basically makes the world real instead of just, you know, a building ground, which means kind of it's the survival option. Uh, if you're just doing creative stuff, it's not necessary. But if you are doing survival stuff, you might want this. Or if you want it to look like it's a survival stuff, that's something you can do. Uh, lakes, water lakes, lava lakes, lava lakes. <laughs> they all speak to themselves. So yeah, now we've made ourselves our own super flat. It's jungle, it's got all this stuff, and let's just go into creative so I can show you how this looks. So actually, let's just have loads of uh, let's just have loads of air so I can show you that. Also, uh, one fun fact is they've actually, this is the first time they've recognized air as an actual block in game. You can see air is a block choice as long as all these other things. Uh, speaking of all these other things, this isn't every block in the game. You can't pick every block uh, there, unfortunately. You can only pick a limited few. Uh, for the most part, it's every single building block, a few decorated blocks, and then a few pieces from the redstone. So, redstone lamps and TNT, but also crafting tables. So, we can make the... To Actually, let's make the toy cat perfect world by having the one of the one of these layers being a crafting table layer. So, that, let's just quickly add a layer of crafting tables. Because uh, you know how much I like my crafting tables. And now, now I never have to worry about crafting tables. That's actually a pretty cool idea. But yeah, so let's go into this one, and then I'll show you a cool challenge we can do after this. So, if we just exit out, it'll say you have villagers enabled, but they can't be generated. Uh, don't worry about that. It's a problem, but it just means that there can't be villages in a jungle, so the fact that I went through the option is pointless. The seed, if you're wondering, for a customized super flat, does next to nothing. It just determines where the temples, the villages, etc. spawn. If you're not using those anyway, it's not important. If you are using those, it's still very not much. But it doesn't have much importance. But if you want to have a seed with lots of jungle temples, take one of my uh, Seed Sunday seeds. Uh, that's something you can do. So I might go for a specific super flat seed after this. I don't know. So let's uh, load up the world, shall we? I am playing on the Xbox One. Uh, the update is now out, I believe, on both the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation. It, it's out everywhere. Like, it kind of got delayed in North America, but you should be able to download it. And uh, the Xbox One has it, too. And uh, the Xbox One kind of deals with stuff a little bit better. Uh, that's why I did my TNT soup flat here. Which, by the way, another... I know that's everyone's first reaction. Like, have to have a world of TNT. And it's cool like that. So, uh, as you can see, because I have decorations turned on, it has all these jungle trees here. And to some extent, you might think... Toy, toy Cat, how is this even super flat? But uh, you notice, uh, first of all, we're only eight, 16 layers up, unlike a real thing. And yeah, it actually would be a pretty cool thing. But uh, you can see it's got loads of cool things. <laughs> where, where you see lakes, they're crafting tables at the bottom instead of something real. And then below that, even, we've got ourselves some sand and some clay because they're part of the decoration. It is it is really cool that it's it's a world you create yourself. It's not entirely customizable. Like with the PC, you can make a you know you can make hills and stuff in there. But as far as super flats go, this is cool because this is... This might as well be a survival world. This has all the things that you need in a survival world. And you can make it into one pretty easily. So that's, you know, that's what's going on right here. Uh, crafting tables in the water. If that sounds like something you want, you can make that happen. Oh, I've got classic crafting on still. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, this uh, if you look at the grass, it's green. If this if we didn't have decorations, if this was just flat, you can have that green tent, tint by having a uh, jungle blind. You can make it snow when it snows. So if you change other things, you can do that. And, yeah, that's an option. So let's go back to the menu and let's uh, show you what exactly is going on with, uh, you know, a little bit of challenge. So let's be right back. Okay, so that was just a fun example of how you can use it for creative building or for survival, you know, like a kind of combination of the two. Let's show you a pure survival challenge you can make this. So we'll just go back to preset classic flat. This is a great one to go back to because it only has dirt and grass. They're easily removed. It's not like, you know, uh, 
Snowy Kingdom where it's a bunch of different stuff. It's just easily removed if you go with Classic Flat. So this is the easiest one to go from, and let's use the Never preset. So uh, this is probably one of the most challenged ones, and it's one of the coolest because of how cool it looks. I'll show you that in a second. Just turn on everything so you actually have something to explore. Turn on Max if you want. Uh, Let's say 0.5%, somewhere between min and max. Have your free strongholds, have your biome specifics, have your dungeons, have your decorations, and why not have your lakes and your lava lakes? Because that's fun too. Uh, and what you want to do is you might want to make sure you have your ores somewhere down at the bottom, so you can be like, okay, so let's uh, add a layer of uh, layer of diamonds, and then we'll add a layer of iron ore somewhere way higher up. Sorry, add layer, not a dit layer. Uh, and what you can actually do is, as long as you give yourself the ores, because the never obviously doesn't naturally spawn all these ores. Uh, I'm gonna get this all done and wrong somehow. Uh, what you can actually do is you can make yourself a really fun survival challenge, which is, uh, you know, it's it's about the surface being deadly, because you'll, you'll see what I mean in a little bit, but uh, we'll add, I don't know, let's, have we got, so yeah, we'll add some coal to, and then we'll start adding something to actually blo uh, bulk the place out. So, we'll put the grass block uh, way, way at the top, so edit, actually we'll just delete the grass block, we'll move this less, because you press X to move it, all the way up to here. And then we'll edit it and add a bunch more dirt, just because why shouldn't there be dirt there? And then let's add something cool to be at the top here. So we need to have a lot of it so that there's something to work through. Uh, we can, in fact, we can make it like a wood, uh, you know, instead of having to mine through it, you have to, uh, you know, use an axe to get through it. I think that'd be a cool enough idea. Uh, so yeah, let's just have jungle planks be the next, uh, I don't know, 40 layers. And this means that you have an entire challenge world that, it's, uh, you know, it's all about avoiding the surface and the underground is made entirely of wood. So we'll just have one more surface layer. Uh, should we use mycelium, maybe? I think I think that'd be a cool way to top this whole thing up. Or we could use never brick, or we could use never act to go with that feel. You know, what? let's go with mycelium up. So yeah, we've, as you can see, with that simply, we made ourselves a world. And this is a pretty cool challenge because... Um, you know, trying to survive, trying to do all the things you need to do in this world can be challenging because there are some things you can't obviously get without going to the abandoned mine shafts. Even though there are these ores down here, you have to go a while to get them. I think it's actually we should probably just move the. Uh, we'll, we'll actually yeah, let, let's move the iron ore uh, up to there. You know, make it make it a bit fair. So also probably the coal. There we go. So now there's dirt to get through, and uh, this is our world. So again, we could create a seed if we want to because that would probably determine where the nev fortress will spawn. But for now, we'll be fine. So um. Let's uh, just close this up and let's go into the game. So we'll go into creative just so I don't die instantly. And let's show you how this looks. So actually, uh, we'll go on to host privileges. Always turn on host privileges when you're playing on creative. For some reason, they're not automatically enabled. But they like to do all the cool stuff, like change in survival, that sort of stuff. And I, I think it's uh, something that just should be enabled. I, I, I like it a lot. It's a, it's a pro tip for this next update. Definitely, if you're in creative, use host privileges. So this is the world. Look at this thing. It's so crazy. So weird to look at. And there's just... Uh, you know, there's all these gas around. Like, look at the sky. It's, it's so, like, almost trippy. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's very, very cool. And, of course, there's lava lakes, water lakes all over the place. Uh, it's, pr it's pretty cool enough just from the surface. And then if you want to go down, you get to use the jungle woods. So, uh, yeah, it's an entirely different experience. And this is one I just came up with on the top of my head. But yeah, it's just so cool for so many ways. I'm probably going to be doing one of these challenges uh, later today uh, for my live stream, because it is live stream Thursday, I believe. Um, so yeah, I don't know what it's going to be, but there's a lot of cool options. Uh, I hope you... Oh, see, the zombie pigment up here too, and it's got the same problem. So you can always get gold from these guys if you want some gold. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very, very cool uh, option for a world right here, as well as a bunch more that I'm sure you guys will come up with. Let me know a favorite one if you have one in the comments, and let me know if you want to try out this challenge and see how it goes. Because uh, if you look below ground long enough, you will find a strong Holding or abandoned mine shop, and then you've got a whole bunch of stuff to explore. Let's see if we can just find one doing this. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get doubtful that we will, but yeah, um, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did like it, please do like it and let me know. It helps out the channel a lot and lets me know you did like it. Share it if you really liked it and subscribe if you're new around here because I make videos like this every single day. And if you subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Thank you all for watching. And there's so many likes in this map, and goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, see you in, in the next video.